do have a, a reception for the graduates that are hosting one in the gym after church. And whether you have a gift for anyone or not, I, I just ask that everyone in here just go by, look at the pictures, see what they've accomplished, and, and just encourage them as they go forward from here. Uh, my message today is going to be focused a lot towards the students in the room, the ones that are going to be moving on, going to college, going on to whatever it is that their, their choice is. Um, but I just pray that everyone can gain something from here. I believe the Holy Spirit can reach everyone through any message. <clears throat> I just want to start off by trying to relate a little bit to you guys, the 18, 17, 18-year-olds 18 in the room. Um, and then there was, there's a, a couple of college graduates as well that I think were the same age. Um, so, but, but to the high school graduates in the room, you guys might not know this, but you guys are actually, your age is actually kind of an odd age. The time that you were born is different than almost everyone else. Because the time that you were born made it to where you experienced a totally different life growing up than, than everyone that came before you. Because me, I'm only a few years older than you guys. But when I was born, the country, the world, was in a lot more peaceful state than it is today. And I'm only a few years older than you guys. But... We hear a lot on the news and on social media and stuff that, you know, <clears throat> people hating on the millennials, right? And you guys, the 17 and 18-year-olds, aren't millennials. But sometimes you get characterized into the millennial group and the, and the hate that comes upon the millennials and the, the, uh, the blame that goes upon the millennials. But you guys are actually in Generation Z, and I'm sure you guys knew that. But <clears throat> what is very different from millennials and you guys is that millennials who were born from 1980 to 1995 were born in a relatively peaceful time. The, the economy was doing well. The world was relatively peaceful compared to now. But you guys were born in 2000, 1999, 2000, 2001 in there, 2000. You guys were born in that area. So that means before you were even old enough to speak, the country fell apart. 9-11 happened. So you guys get to grow up <clears throat> in a country that's at a state of war your entire life growing up, even to this point today. You grew up in a totally different time. Yet, you guys still get to hear from people older than you, and I'm not trying to hate on the, the other people in the room, but this is just for you guys right now. You guys still get to hear how you should do things. This is what you should do. This is the path you should take. This is the way you should go. And it's almost like trying to teach a fish to run. Because you guys have a totally different upbringing, a totally different environment. Everything is different for you. But the people that are telling you what to do, they haven't been there. You guys have been there. They haven't been there. They don't know what it's like to, be, to grow up in an environment where the country that you live in is constantly at war from the day that you can speak till today. So we're going to kind of talk about why you shouldn't necessarily focus on all of the expectations that everyone's going to have for you because you're, college, you're a high school graduate now, some college graduates, and if it hasn't happened already, be prepared because all of the experts on life are going to come to you. And they're going to come and they're going to tell you, this is what you should do. Oh, you shouldn't do that. Don't, don't go that way. You need to do this. You, know, you, can't get, you can't get anywhere in life without this. You can't do anything unless you accomplish this. So what I want to talk to you about today is kind of just how to let go of all the expectations that the world is going to put on you and rather just pursue the goal and the mission that God has given to you. So to get started, it is clear that things changed throughout the world very quickly and very often. Things change all the time. Week to week, we have events that will happen that will totally change the course of history forever. We see it happen all the time, but we don't necessarily recognize it every time it happens. So in order for us to be successful, graduates, us, everyone in the room, in order for us to be successful, 
we have to stop comparing ourselves to others. We can't compare, you graduates can't compare yourself to what your parents did. And your parents can't compare themselves to what their parents did. Because the expectations are always going to change. So no one is ever going to know the perfect answer. Almost nobody. So as long as you guys or myself, anyone in here, are comparing yourselves to others, trying to strive for something that someone else has done, you're aiming for a moving target when there's a target that is unmoving waiting for you. <clears throat> there is a target and a mission that has never changed. It is always true and has standed true and will stand true forever. And that is the word of God. The Bible tells us exactly what our mission is, exactly what you're expected to do, and exactly how to do it. But you're going to have people throughout the world, throughout your life, that are going to tell you different. They're going to tell you that the world expects this from you. It may not be the same thing that that book says, but this is what you need to do to be successful. So before you start listening to all that, just remember, there is a target that is unmoving, just waiting for you to aim and take your shot at. And every time that we compare ourselves to each other, you're aiming for a moving target, and you're likely going to miss. So to get started, I'm going to kind of share some tips. And it kind of sounds like, oh, he's a hypocrite. Hold up. He just said, don't listen to people. But now he's going to tell us what to do. I'm different. <clears throat> I'm just kidding. What I'm going to share with you are some tips, scripturally, scripturally backed tips that are going to help you stay on the narrow path as you move forward. Because let me tell you, it is hard. I don't care if you're going to a Christian college. I don't care if you're not going to college at all. I don't care if you're going to keep working the same job that you're working now. It'll get harder every day. So I'm going to give you seven tips. It'll be a seven-part message, but it'll be quick. Don't worry. Um, we'll just call it a one-part series that'll start and end today. <clears throat> I call these the seven Bs. Um, it's something that's kind of been inspired to me through, through a book that I've read, but it, I call it the seven Bs. And the reason I'm going to use these tips is because you may not know that 75% of Christian students will walk away from their faith during their freshman year in the United States. These seven tips, I believe, are a great way to equip you to not become a part of that statistic. So the first B that we're going to go through is what you need to be is be loving God. You need to be loving God when you go off, when you move forward. We all do. You need to love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. Remember when I said it was scripturally backed up? This ain't me. This is straight out of the Bible. The first and greatest commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. That doesn't mean do it while you grow up, and then when you go off to college, put it on hold, and then when you graduate, then find a church and then start, start over and try it again. This means what it means. It's, it's right there. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The passions of your heart become visible through what your mind thinks and what your body does. Okay? So what you do and what you think make visible to you what the passions of your heart are. So if you're wondering, am I loving God? Just take a step back, th look at what you think throughout your life, throughout your day, and then look at what you do, how you live, and I bet you the answer will be revealed to you. Are you loving God? You need to be loving God. One thing that you're going to get when you go to college is emotionalism. You may not know what that means, but but I think we'll get it here. Emotionalism. You can't give in to emotionalism. So what you'll find as a Christian is that when you go to college, they're going to try to tell you everything that you've learned that came from that Bible is totally false. It's a fairy tale. You're crazy. 
And they're going to try not only to just say straight up, they probably won't say straight up, hey, the Bible is wrong, you're wrong, Christians are wrong. They're probably not going to tell you that. What they're going to do is, is try to form your beliefs and your behaviors. They're going to try to form your thoughts. They're going to form your actions so that the passions of your heart change from loving God to loving the world. They're not just going to come right out and tell you, hey, we're going to try to be, make you not a Christian anymore. But they're going to try to change what your hands do and what your mind does so that your heart changes. And once they get your heart, it's hard to come back. It's hard to get it back. One quote that I like, and I, it just, it sounds ironic, but it makes so much sense at the same time, is never let your schooling get in the way of your education. That there is one of the biggest mistakes that I see myself and all students across the country make all the time, is that they let their schooling get in the way of their education. Because we go to school, we go to college for, for one reason. Um... Uh, that's definitely not true. Multiple reasons. But we choose to go to college because we want to get a paper that helps us get a job. But then when we get there, we find out, oh, we're doing this for different reasons. There's a lot of things that, that get in our way when we go to college. But I want to encourage you to never let your schooling get, into the, get in the way of the education that, that you can still be growing and learning and loving God throughout college and never let it get in the way of that relationship. Number two, be loving others. You guys can probably see and think about in your mind someone who loves God a lot, but doesn't love others. I, I mean, I know people like that. There's plenty of people that, you, that everyone in here probably knows that loves God a lot, but they don't love others. And it's very apparent. The Bible says you should love your neighbor as yourself. Right after that first commandment comes this commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. It, that's not easy. That'll be hard and it'll get harder. Any of you seniors in here, this is right to you guys. You guys know any stupid people? <laughs> Same here. Um, it is not easy to love others. as. It doesn't say love your neighbor as yourself unless they're stupid. It doesn't say love them as yourself unless you don't like them. It doesn't even say you have to like them. It says you have to love them. Love them as yourself. If you make good grades in college and you love others, you'll help others make good grades in college. If you need help with math, some of you need help with math, ask her. If you need help with math, help someone else with their English. You see what I'm saying? You want people to love you, but are you loving people? You need to love others. If you love God, this, the, the tip number two will just come. People will put on a front that they love God by going to church, reading the Bible, hosting a Bible study. But if they are truly loving God, if that is what they're doing, you will see it because what their hands are doing and what their mind is doing will show it. And what their hands are doing are loving others through the action of love. Never stop working to spread God's love. God has placed you where you are, and he has laid down the path of where you're going. So as you take that path, remember that every person you come by, every person you interact with, everyone you run into, God knows that they're there, and he's just waiting to see how are you going to take advantage of that moment that he's given you. Love others. Number three, be saturated in the Bible. This is huge. Right now, we have an issue because now you're asking me to do something that I don't even do now. So now you're telling me, on top of all this other stuff, Josh, you're telling me I need to be saturated in the Bible? I got other stuff to do. I'm, I got a lot of, I'm, I'm going to unpack my dorm room. It's going to be tough. I'm not saying this stuff's going to be easy. I'm telling you, this is what has to happen in order for you to not be a part of the 75%. To be saturated in the Bible does not mean take 10 minutes a day and do a devotion, to, and do a devotion on your YouVersion app. That's, 10 minutes a day is not saturation. So if you thought just saying be saturated in the Bible was sounded tough, just wait. 
Because saturation in the Bible is much more than 10 minutes a day. I'm talking about memorizing verses, memorizing paragraphs, memorizing chapters. Check this out. Stay with me here. Memorize books of the Bible. That's crazy. That is crazy right there, but that is saturation in the Word of God. Let me tell you, have, there's probably some in here that have memorized entire paragraphs of the Bible, memorized entire chapters of the Bible, memorized entire books of the Bible. Find someone that's done that and ask them, did it even, did it even help? Did it do anything for you? Did it help? Just see what they say. In order to keep your faith strong in college, you're going to have to be saturated in the Bible. You have to meditate on the very truth that your faith stands on. Because if you go to college and you stop reading the Bible, it's very easy to do. But if you go to college and stop reading the Bible, that's it. Where's the truth at? Your, your faith, your love for God, everything has nothing to stand on if you're not saturating yourself in God's Word. Number four, be done with self-reliance. This one is for everyone. This isn't, this isn't just for the college students in the room. This is for everyone. Be done with self-reliance. John 15, 5, the end of the verse says, Apart from Jesus, I can do nothing. Nothing apart from Jesus. I have a cool quote here. This, you got to follow along with this one. It's from Rick Rigsby. He says, Ego is the anesthesia that deadens the pain of stupidity. <laughs> right, right? Check it out. I'll say it one more time. Ego is the anesthesia that deadens the pain of stupidity. Until you let go of yourself, you will never know the damage that you're causing. You could have so many opportunities to reach people for Christ, but your ego can get in the way and you won't even recognize that you're missing those opportunities. You won't even know that anything is ever wrong until you let go of yourself and give everything to God. You got to ca cast yourself upon the Lord to sustain you and quit relying on yourself because it's going to fail. You will fail yourself. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, every one of them, every hour, every minute, in all your ways, acknowledge, the, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. I'm just re-looking in here where the part says that we should step in and take over. It ain't there. I'll tell you. You guys, if you don't have your Bible out, I'll just, spoiler, it ain't there. You got to let go. It's God that will sustain you, not yourself. Do not rely on yourself. You need to pray. And I'm not talking just before meals. You have to pray and pray hard and be done with moment-to-moment -moment self sufficiency. Because self sufficiency is just sounds like failure to me. Because it won't last. It will not last. You need to be utterly dependent on God. Number five. This one I'm kind of cheating on. The fifth B is belong to a church. Stay with me here. <clears throat> this one is hard. One thing that is so common, and you guys will probably just, you'll, I want to get some amens, is that college, high school graduates don't know where to go after, after they graduate. They don't know where to go. Even with the students that are in youth group, they, they get done with youth group, and they, they get kicked out. August 1st, warning, you get kicked out. Where are you going to go? Well, I maybe mean, we have a place for you, but one of the issues is that they, they don't know that place. They don't know those people. They don't even, they don't, they're not close to those people. They don't feel comfortable just, oh, I'm done with youth group. Okay, I'll go join this group. That ain't how kids are. That ain't how adults are. That just ain't how we are. You have to surround yourself with a church family. You have one right here, but a lot of you, the, 
where you're going. Some of you are going all the way to Texas. Some of you are going all over the country. A lot of you, this church family is not going to be readily at your side every Sunday, every Wednesday for you to rely on. That doesn't mean there isn't another church family that's just as ready to love you and take care of you and support you. They're everywhere. You need to surround yourself. You need to belong to a Bible-saturated, Christ-exalting, God-centered congregation that'll be there to support you and help you grow. Because without a family, it's tough. I'm not saying you can't, I'm not saying you can't stand firm in your faith without a church. But I'm just saying, if it's there, and it will be, use it. Go to church. Belong to a church. Belong to a church family. It's so common, like you said, like, or like I said, 75% of the time, it's so common that once this is over, it's over for five years or more, 10 years, 15 years. People don't, they won't even step back into a church, between church doors, because they don't, they don't know where to go. You don't know where to go. But just, you just need to, to let go and let God lead you somewhere and belong to a church. The common thing to do, like I said, is you graduate high school, you go off to college, you have your fun, you drop out a couple times, you go back, you finally get your degree, you might get married, and then, okay, we should probably find a church. We should probably, you know, I, I feel like my relationship isn't as strong as it used to be. I need to, I need to get back in church. That is the mold that you're getting ready to be able to just jump right into. But I am challenging you guys to break that mold. I'm challenging you guys to just grow up. Break the mold. The people that you're going to be surrounded by in college, they're not going to be the type that are going to be ready to encourage you to grow up. They might, there might be some, but collectively, they're going to tell you don't grow up. Have fun. You're still young. But I'm challenging you to grow up. Be bold and go join a family and surround yourself with Christ lovers. Number six, be guarded from the world. The Bible says if your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. What does that mean? Hold up. Don't be cutting your hands off. What that means is guard yourself from the craving that the world craves. If you are finding out, because I'm not saying don't hang out with unbelievers because they, they need you. But if you find out that hanging out with unbelievers leads you to love what they love rather than helping them love what you love, cut them off. Cut off your hand. Back off. Fill yourself with the love and truth that you know. And I'm talking if it's people, if it's social media, if it's family. We can get radical here. I'm talking anything. Cut it off and be filled with the Spirit and then try again. God's not calling you to go and, and, and hang around with unbelievers because you're a believer and, you know, oh, I mean, I just, I just drink with these people because I'm a Christian and they need me. That, that's not how it works. He's not, that's not where he's calling you. Cut it off and move on Get filled with the Spirit. Try again. But if you find yourself stumbling, cut it off. Number seven, be testing all things. You have to do whatever it is that you have to do to be radically devoted to Jesus. This might come to a surprise to some, but God is God. And he is sovereign. Okay, we have come so far from creation. And what I mean by that is we have come so far from understanding that there's a creator and then there's creation. I'm talking like way down here. He is sovereign over everything. We are not called, you can look in the Bible, you won't find it. We are not called to agree with God. We are called to obey him and worship him. If God 
says something or does something that you don't agree with, if there's something that's wrong in the eyes of God, but you think it's right, that doesn't mean you have to change the fact that you disagree. That just means you have to surrender that belief to God because he is sovereign and he is God. You have one life to live on earth. And it is not a good thing to experiment with. You'll hear many stories of people who have gone through college, grown up, had kids, that said, well, you know, I was growing up in church, and then I went to college, and things got a little rough. It got a little hairy. It got a little sticky. It was bad. But then, you know, then I got my act together, and now I'm good. Do not experiment like they did. Because you never know where your experimenting can take you. You never know how far down a road you might go. You never know if everything's fine and then you don't even make it past your college years. You never know. Do not experiment with this life you have. Do God's mission. What will make your eternity happy? Don't worry about what will make your life on earth happy. You have an eternity to look forward to. God didn't give you this life to experiment with. He gave you a life and he gave you a book. He's already spoken. The ruling is out. We know what we should do. The point I want to get to the seniors in here is that this is not a time for you to step away from your faith and focus on yourself. Though the world will tell you that it is. It's time for you to just back off, focus on yourself, accomplish things for yourself, get yourself where you want to be. That's not what this time is about. This time is a time to radically take ownership of your faith, separate from others, and radically give it to the Lord to be molded beautifully by Him. And He will do that. We never know when our last moments on this, on this earth will be. So we must stand strong, finish the race, because no matter how short or long our life is, we won't know. You have to stand strong and finish strong. College students aren't usually told the lesson of finishing strong, but you have to always be finishing strong because you never know when the finish will be. God has an eternal gift that is far greater than the temporary desires of this world. And I just want to encourage you guys to stay strong in your faith. Stay close to God. Follow the seven B's. And if you do follow them, I promise it'll be a lot harder to walk away. I just want to say congratulations to these seniors. And please join me in a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you so much for this time that we get to study your word, Lord. We thank you for these seniors, God, and everything that they've accomplished, Lord, and, that, and everything that you've gave them, Lord, that, that their heart is filled with you, God, that they'll be able to take that and fill others' hearts with you, Lord. We pray that what they have been taught, Lord, and everything that they've been fed, that it can lead them to lead others to you, God. We just pray that we as a church, Lord, have created fishers of men that can go out and bring others to you. We just pray for their safety, God, and their decisions. We pray that you'll be with them in everything they do, that they point everything back to you, God. We just pray that you'll be with them as they go out and pray that they'll be able to break the mold that the world has laid before them, that they'll be able to break it, create a new generation, keep this generation different as it has been since the day they were born. Lord, we just pray that you'll be with them, be with this church, God, as we